of God. And we're grateful, we're thankful. We express our gratitude and worship and honor and love, thanksgiving to you, the Most High God. We love you, Yeshua. Thank you. Thank you so much that you were wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And you took the chastisement of our peace and it was laid down upon you. Oh God, we are so grateful. We say worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Oh, how we love you. grateful whether you're in this room or you're watching online just take a moment and just express gratitude and thanksgiving of what he did over 2,000 years ago as he was beaten and bruised and bloodied and whipped crucified for us Lord we are grateful we are so grateful we love you we love you Lord I want us to do this I want us to go ahead and be seated in the attitude of worship we're going to continue to worship just a little bit more but we're going to receive Holy Communion together those of you that are watching online, you can join us around the world as part of the body of Christ. We're going to worship. The ushers are going to serve the people here. And I will tell those that are in this room, the communion elements are stacked together. And uh, we'll worship the Lord, then we'll come back and uh, we'll worship the Lord some more. Amen? All right, ushers, you can go ahead and serve the people. Stay there. What I want them to do now is I want you to put some pictures up and we're going to sing that again. And I want you to, you can be seated if you like. I want you online to look now. These, I do this on purpose every year. Either I watch The Passion or I take and I look at pictures that depict as close as humanly possible what Jesus went through. And then after this, I want to have when Jim Caviezel, we were out in Ohio. How many of you remember the Passion of the Christ? Jim Caviezel played Jesus. And uh, I was asking him questions on what it was like, even just to play the part. But I want to play a video after, in just a moment, where he prays the Lord's Prayer in the actual, original language of what Jesus would have prayed before we receive Holy Communion. But I want you to continue to sing that again. And I want them to put up these pictures already and just let it keep rotating back and forth. All right, I want us to take a look at this. Go ahead and sing the precious blood of Jesus. Yeshua, we are so grateful. And as the scripture says, that you were the lamb that was led to the slaughter. They hid their faces when they looked at you. In one translation, it says they have abhorred to look at you. In other words, they vomited. And yet you came as sin sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice of a sinless man. words could never express I don't even think there's human understanding that can comprehend what you did and what you went through and what it must have felt in your human flesh yet the love in your heart Yeshua was greater than the pain of your suffering.
because you could have called down legions of angels and you could have stopped the whole thing. But you kept saying, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. And I would have to say, Yeshua, we did. We didn't know, nor do we know. We don't fully comprehend the sacrifice that was needed. Oh, but master the price that you paid. I and these people, we owe our lives to you. For that's who you died for. And yet when I say thank you, it sounds so cheap against the costly blood. everything to you. We are grateful. I don't think there's anyone I want to be more like than you. you to hold up that which he said this is my body and on the night that he was betrayed he took the bread and he broke it maybe some of you you want to do the same as a sign that whatever is broken missing fractured maybe any wound disease symptom Whatever you're facing his body was wounded and then he suffered so that you don't have to be broken you don't have to be sick you don't have to be in fear anxiety but your life can have a life of wholeness this is why many many times when the Pharisees and the scribes tried to trap Jesus Tell us plainly, are you the Christ? And he would say, I am your good shepherd. I am the door, the very name of God. But he said in John 10, and this is what this represents, his body tonight. He said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But listen to the name of God now. I am. Come that you might find life and life more abundantly. And the life that we receive tonight, oh God, is the God kind of life. The sozo rights and privileges that Jesus paid for on his body, we receive it. Health, healing, wholeness, soundness of mind, a blessed memory. 
long life, forgiveness, eternal life, preservation, protection, deliverance, rescue, kept from harm and danger, redeemed from all destruction and tragedies and calamities. We'd receive that life according to John 6. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has my life in them. We receive that now. It goes into every vein. It goes into our blood system. It goes into every organ, every particle. The immune system of our body. Receive that life, that life of our covenant, the life of Yeshua. Therefore, we are healthy, we are whole, we are strong. On the same night in he, when he was betrayed, he took of the cup and he said, Take and drink, for this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you do this, you do show the Lord's power until I come. The Bible says in Psalm 23 that as we partake of communion, it's a table prepared before us in the presence of our enemies. You know why? Because the Bible says this purpose was Jesus manifest to destroy the works of the devil. So no matter what is trying to come against you and you that are watching, it's been destroyed. It has no power over you. And Brenda and I, as we were praying for you today, one thing that I asked God to do, I said, God, if you made a public display over the devil, if you kicked his backside, I'm asking you today to make a publicly embarrassment out of him again as you heal people's bodies, as you set them free. I just feel to say this, if you've, if you've committed any sin, I feel like there's some people here you've really done wrong this week in your heart, your mind, and you're beating yourself up over the head. Only God has the power to forgive sins alone. Not a priest, not anybody else, but God alone. And the power of his blood, you know what it does? It gives you a clean start, a fresh start, clean slate. It's like he wipes it away. So I want you to say that. Say, Lord, I repent of every and all sin, trespass, transgression, iniquity, purposeful sin. I repent. I ask you to forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And may now your protecting blood be upon me, upon my life, my loved ones, and all that has been placed in my hands, it is covered and sealed in the Lamb's blood. Let's partake together. Wow. I don't know about you, but even though you mean it from your heart, does anybody feel like this? I just want to say this. Does anybody feel like this where it's like, even though you mean it from your heart, it just sounds so empty when you say thank you. <laughs> Anyone else feel that way? I, I don't know, it's just maybe me. God knows my heart, but anyway, why don't you do this? Jesus said something very powerful, and that is this, that the world will know that we are his followers if we love one another. And boy, if there's been any prayer that I've been praying, I know you have, is God, I just wanna see unity and love among your people. I don't, I'm tired of the fussing and the fighting and the bickering. I just want to get along. Amen. So why don't you do this? Why don't you stand to your feet? And I want you to greet someone. I'm going to come back and just share a short message. And then do this. Say, hey, I bet I know. I bet I know. Who you like listening to better to preach? Pastor Brenda or Hank? See which one they say.
You know, it's amazing that we could have that discussion, Pastor Brenda or Pastor Hank, because when we love one another, it really doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, so anyway, it's all good. I want to do this, and those of you that are watching, we greet you, those that are around the world. We do want to pray over all these prayer requests. Man, there is, they put more out here. This is a lot. We've been praying. And by the way, those of you that are watching, and how many of you, you have a, uh, a family member, or maybe you're up on our uh, family wall down in our Connect Center. Anybody there? We are very diligent. We are still praying every day over those prayer requests. When I come for flash... Uh, uh, point on Monday and Tuesday nights, I like to go down there before, and, and uh, the officers with me and the ushers, man, we pray over them. So can we show the prayer wall? Is there, I don't know if they, I don't think they have, how are they, oh, there it is, look at that. So you guys are good. So there you go, we're still praying. And we're, we're getting great testimonies, but I want you to look up here though, look at this, this is great. And uh, I mean, they packed them in really good. So we're going to pray over this, Brent and I prayed quite a bit over this, and we are believing God that we're going to see some accelerated things. Well, one of the things that we talked about, and I want to show you a quick video before I get started. I told you this, but this was when um, Jim Caviezel was out in uh, Ohio, and I just thought this was powerful to hear how Jesus would have sounded. Um, I told Jim Caviezel, I said, Jim, just so you know, I, uh, you know, we got a picture together. I said, I'm just concerned about getting a picture with you. And he said, why? I said, I'm just concerned. People think I look more like Jesus than you, you know. <laughs> right, sure, yeah, right. All right, so uh, I, want, I want to play this. I think before I share a, a quick word, I think you'd really enjoy this. But go ahead and check it out on video and those of you that are watching. How Zina Otia boy Kuma Bezrati Shambreni Meresha the Sherta Minuelai Akakasaya Nashia than I Akakasiti Ga Mutakti Abba Kulit Gel Henkel Kosseye e de Mini Akin Lakisfar Lehue de Lakisfar il thil kom rahe mahaki hita hita hivu dinale dina ko kavel dina of hef lokom antun hita hivu lokom my commandment to you is this you love one another as I have loved you so you love one another Coming very soon, the resurrection of the Christ. God bless you. Wow. Which he said, I asked him, and he said it's coming. And you know what's so crazy is if you've been following our ministry, uh, years ago, right when the Passion of the Christ came out, it was shortly right around that time, and the Lord repeated again. He said, there shall be a sequel to this movie. And I will show the power of my resurrection. So God was already telling them before they had it in the works. And then, are you ready? You know what's connected to that prophetic word? Is that when you see the sequel, God says, it'll be a sign unto this country and to the earth that my glory and my revival has begun. So, isn't that amazing? So, so we got great things. All right, I want to talk to you tonight because we've got prayer requests. How many of you have a need in here? And those of you that are watching, you can put your hand emoji up. How many of you have a need? You have something that you are believing God. How many of you want that need to take about 21 days to? How many would like that need to be met like tonight? How many would like it tonight? Come on, somebody say tonight. In one night. How about? Tonight! I want you to shout tonight. Shout tonight. Tonight! It happens in my life. Over my loved ones. Tonight. All right? You might say, well, is that possible? I want you to look at 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1. I've been saying this for quite some time. Now, you have to understand what was happening in this, when this scripture came, it was so bad that they were eating donkey head. Can you imagine? I don't know what that tastes like. 
They were literally using dove's dung to cook. And they were even boiling their babies. And yet the prophet comes along, Elisha, and he says something. And notice it's not delayed. It's not sometime in the future. How many of you have ever heard, you know, I get tired of the prophetic words. I'm going to. I'm like, God, how many times are you just going to do it? You know, I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm coming. I'm going to. But here's what it says. This time, tomorrow. He's prophesying. He says, listen, there's a famine right now. There's a harshness that has been in this season. But this time tomorrow, things are going to begin to change. Notice they didn't say this time next year. In one night, overnight, something is about to change. And I'm telling you, I feel by the Spirit of the living God that something tonight in this room, in this atmosphere, those of you that are watching, something is about to manifest that has your name. Your address, your phone number. Come on, it has your family members. It has your healing. Something of God is about to happen tonight. This night. Then when you wake up tomorrow, you're going to look at yourself. You're going to touch your toes probably for the first time. Come on. (laughs) You're going to say something has happened this time. It has changed. Something significant has broken forth. Look at 1 Kings 18, verse 41. I've been sharing this with you as well. Again, there was a famine on the land three and a half years. How many of you know we in this country, in the United States of America, and many of you that are watching around the world, it seems like it's been a long season. I think this has been the longest four years of my life. How about you? But it's only been three and a half, but it seems like a long time. When's the show going to end? But you might as well sit back eat popcorn, eat cake, oxtails, right? Not donkey's head, oxtails. And get some greens. No, not the ones from your lawn. That's what I used to think greens was when they told me, have you ever had greens? And they showed to me, I'm like, man, you mow that stuff. But anyway, three and a half years, it was a harsh season. And look what the prophet says. And there was no absolute significant evidence, proof, that what he was prophesying was in fact true. He gets up and he says unto Ahab, says it to the government, to the king, get up, eat and drink, for there is a shift. Something is about to change. I can hear it. I can feel it. I can sense it. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Man, if I had a little bit more jive in me, can you play some jive? Play some jive. I feel a song coming. Remember that old song, Can You Feel It? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Remember Michael? Can you feel it? Eddie, if you would have just played, it would have been anointed. Oh, stop on Good Friday. You're not going to do that on Good Friday. Come on, you guys remember that, right? You go to all the football games and everything they play. But can you feel it? Come on, that's what God's saying. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Come on, this is your night. Something is about to shift. Something is about to change. Something is about to bust forth. And it's got your name on it. I'm telling you, I can feel it. And the harsh season that you've been under is going to be known as an old season. Come on, I want you just to turn around and say, bye-bye, old season. Bye-bye. Because this time tomorrow, in one night, tonight, things are changing. For my life. life. You say, well, how do you know? Well, I had a dream. How many remember? Put up 2 Samuel 5, verse 20. I had a dream. Martin Luther isn't the only one. I had a dream. And I'm telling you, 
in the dream, I was telling you that are watching online, I was telling you in this room, I said, get out your cell phones, get out your Bibles, get out your notebooks. God is saying a scripture that is revealing what he's going to do at this time, what he's in process of doing, what is taking place. And I heard myself say over seven times, Second Samuel 5 verse 20. Do you know what it says? Come on. Do you know you might have an enemy right now coming against you? No, it's not just, you know, what we see governmentally. Maybe you have an enemy called soreness, pain, sickness, disease, fatigue, worry, anxiety, marital strife. Come on. Your children are away from God. And they've set themselves to be an enemy. Notice what God says in 2 Samuel 5, verse 20. David came to Bel Perazim, and David smote the devil. <laughs> Come on, the enemy there. And notice what he said. The Lord has broken forth upon my enemies before me. How many of you know this is the night that God is going to break forth on your enemies? Come on. Oh, slew foot, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, the devil who is absolutely defeated. Yeshua made a public display, triumphing over him. Come on, all sickness, all disease is going to go from your body. And I pronounce this night. It changes. And I love what it says. It breaks forth. Like the breaking forth of the breach of waters or like how many of you have ever seen like in a movie when, when a bridge breaks? Yeah, like the, the one that Obama put out around the time of an eclipse. They showed the exact same bridge in his movie. Hmm, interesting. But how many have ever seen a dam break before? God is saying, listen, it may not look like it, but all it takes is a little bit of a pinhole. But once it gets started, you can't stop it. And I'm here to tell you there is something in motion that I can sense. It's called change. It's called a new season. It's called breakthrough. And that breakthrough has started. It's not coming. That breakthrough is absolutely in manifestation. Glory! It's going to break forth. Like the breaking of the waters. Come on, hey! say well wow I'll take that you know what listen I like what 2nd Samuel chapter 7 verse 11 you know what God promised us at the beginning of the year here's what he said how many of you ever been to 7-eleven how many of you don't know what 7-eleven is educate him google it but I'm going to take you to 7-eleven of scripture 2nd Samuel 7-eleven so time to go to 7-eleven 7-eleven for heaven right or whatever now notice what God says. He says, listen, I think I got the wrong scripture. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> no, it is the right one. And I've caused you to have rest yes. from all your enemies. Yes. You know what part of your rest is? Is we don't have to face that enemy anymore. Yes. When you wake up and there's no more acid reflex, not tomorrow. Not the next day, not the next day, not the next day, not the next day. Come on. There's not that stubborn cough that won't go away. You won't have to sit there and apologize that it's allergy season. Right? Your eye begins to open. Your ears begin to open. The pain begins to leave your body. You see the financial breakthrough that you have been tithing regularly and you have been sowing and you've been expecting. Come on. It's because God is breaking forth. And how about this? He's breaking forth on your enemies. And as a result, come on, I want you to shout it. Say, rest, rest, rest from my enemies. Man, if you have rest from whatever that disease is, it means tomorrow when you wake up, you don't have it. It's left your body. You have rest from a marital strife. You actually roll over and kiss with dragon breath for the first time ever. It's a miracle. 
I've been married 35 years, and that would never be allowed. She would put her cheek up. Brenda, I want the lips. Brush first. By the way, I was at the dentist the other day. I go every six months. I like it. I love going to the dentist. And so I asked the dentist lady that's working on my teeth. I said, I got a question. I said, I come every six months, and I like it. She says, man, you got great teeth. I said, thank you. It's after God. But I said, let me ask you a question. Do people really come in here that, like, don't brush? And she stops. She goes, you won't believe it. She goes, there's people that come in here, and we tell them that, you know, you need to brush. They're like, huh? Well, how often do I need to brush? She said, every day. Oh, well, I usually, like, once a week. I'm like, I said, now, that has to be young people, right? Look at somebody young and point at them. Say, that's be you. You're, you're, you're generous. <laughs> no, 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 don't. Don't do that. She goes, no, actually, people of all ages, they don't brush. And, they, and some people say, well, it's just not in my regular hygiene. Oh, my goodness. I got a prophetic sign. A breath mint. You know why they, you know why they put it like this round? Because, like, if you're on a boat, it's a lifesaver. So, so you can throw, throw one to somebody around you, and it's a, it's a lifesaver, you know. But I want, you to look at, <laughs> I want you to look at Luke chapter 1, verse 71. Here's another prophecy. So this was about the Messiah. You know what I really believe that is part of what we're going to begin to see happen? The change that I sense is look at this prophecy about Yeshua. That we should be saved from our enemies. Now we always think that, you know, enemies are like, you know, some foreign nation or entity. But every one of us can say that maybe there's an enemy that tries to knock on our door. Maybe it's that sin that you cannot get victory over. Maybe it's that disease that you've been believing God for complete and total healing and restoration. Maybe it's that child that you're believing. Well, I believe that God's going to save us from our enemies. I believe our enemies are going to absolutely get a touch from God. I really do. You know how it is? If it's disease, they're going to get such a touch that that disease is going to get healed. That strife is going to come into peace and order. Amen? Amen. Amen. And from those that hate us. Now, I want to show you this in the closing moments. I want to show you the power of what happened in one night. How many of you remember the story in Daniel 6 of Daniel in the lion's den? I want you to look at this. The king, he puts Daniel in the lion's den. And look at what happens in one night. Maybe you've got the lion. Or the devil, I should say, he's never the lion, but he roars about like a lion. He's a coward. He acts like he's big and tough. But maybe he's roaring real big. Maybe you are literally under his prowl. And he's roaring real big, trying to intimidate you, making you think that you've got to keep the situation that you're facing right now, no matter what it is. Can you imagine what Daniel must have felt, man? He gets thrown into a lion's den. But Daniel was a man of faith. And the king went to his palace and he passed the night. He began to fast. He was so bothered by his decision. And neither were there instruments of music brought before him. And his sleep went from him. And the king arose very early in the morning and he went to, the, to look onto the den of lions. Now he's thinking that there is something that is not going to be good. He's probably going to see bones if that. And when he came to the den, he cried in a... Lamentable voice unto Daniel, not expecting in one night for something to be changed. He didn't expect this king that somehow there was a divine intervention that was bigger than anything that the devil could throw at Daniel. Amen. Come on, what's the devil been throwing at you and those of you that are watching? And the king spoke and said to Daniel, Oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom you serve? Is he able to deliver you from the lions? And then Daniel said, Hank Kuhneman translation, Yes, they're on a Daniel fast. <laughs> These are Christian lions. <laughs> and it's the first of the year when you fast. No, it wasn't. But anyway, Daniel said, Oh, king, live forever. God has sent his angel. We're going to pray for his angels and those of you that are watching. That they're going to come 
And they're going to absolutely shut any mouth of any lion. Come on, maybe you have those that are speaking against you. Maybe there's some kind of argument that's become uh, enemy to you. Maybe there is something that the enemy has bit down to try to grab a hold of your life. And the doctor told you that what you're facing is permanent. For they have not hurt me because the angel shut his mouth. Are you ready? Are you ready tonight in one night that whatever is attacking you is going to shut its mouth? It is going to have no power over you? I want you to look at Exodus chapter 11. Look at verse 4. Now look at what God said about the children of Israel. This is very holy. You think about what happened in the first Passover. They didn't even realize that what they were doing was foreshadowing what happened over 2,000 years ago with Yeshua, the Lamb of God, who would take away, not just cover sins, but take away the sins of all mankind. And Moses said, thus saith the Lord, I like this, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. In other words, in one night, God would begin to deliver his people. Now, look at what God said. Go to the next chapter, Exodus 12. Look at what God says. And he says, for I'll pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, and I'll execute my judgment because I am the Lord. Notice he uses the word, I am. He uses his name. I am God. Look at the next verse. Actually, let's go to the next one, 23. What is it? 22, 23, whatever that. Yeah, here it is. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop. So once they would, you know, kill the lamb, they would eat the lamb. And in one night, man, something happened when they got delivered. When they went out. Do you know the Bible says there's not one feeble one among them? There was not one sick. You know how you watch the Ten Commandments? They're advertising it on TV that it's going to be on. Notice how they never show Jesus of Nazareth or the Passion of the Christ. They'll show the Ten Commandments because they know the truth. They know that Jesus said, said his name, I am. I am. That's my name. I'm God. I am the way, the only way, the truth and life. And no man can come unto the Father except by me. So they'll show the Ten Commandments. But you ever notice the Ten Commandments when they show the Exodus? They show these little old guys out there, you know, they're getting carried. and like, That's not even biblical. The Bible says if they'll put it up, Psalm 105, verse 37. Watch when they left in one night what happened. Come on, this is your night. This is your night. I said to you that are watching, it is your night. I prophesy to every one of these prayer requests, it is their night. Now watch how God brings the children of Israel out. He brings them out with silver and gold, Psalm 105, verse 37. And there was not one weak, sick, blind, deaf, tripping, klutziness, They didn't have to wait on the old people. The old people was leading them, called Moses. And they had to keep up with an 80-some-year-old man. There was not one feeble. Now, when did this happen? You know when it happened? You go back to Exodus 12. When they began to eat of the lamb. Come on, we just ate of the body. We partook of the blood of the lamb of God. Something began to happen supernaturally in their life, in their body, in their home, over their children, over their loved ones. Come on. Even over their possessions. The Bible says that they went out of Egypt with silver and gold. Where did they get it? They were slaves. Not only did their physical condition change, but so did their financial. The Bible says they went on and knocked on the doors of the Egyptians. And it says they asked, but really the original Hebrew is they demanded. Give us our stuff. Now, if you had ten plagues and it didn't touch the people knocking on your door, you'd give them everything too. It was the greatest stick up there ever was in the name of righteousness. (laughs) There 
wasn't any feeble one in one night. Come on, look at your neighbor. Smack them. No, don't smack them. Bump them and say in one night. It all changed. Look at them and say, I got a feeling. It's going to happen to you in this night. In this night. It changes. Some of you need to put your hand on your head right now. Say in the name of Yeshua. My mind is blessed. No Alzheimer's. No dementia. No bipolar disease. No anxiety. No fear. No worry. In one night, my mind is touched. My memory, my mind is blessed. Come on, touch your body. Say this night right now. This night right now. My body has been touched by the hand of Almighty God. My body is healthy. My body is strong. Disease, sickness, symptoms. Get out! Get out! Get out of my body! Get out of my body! Get out of my body! I receive this night, this night. Come on, stand to your feet this night, this night, this night. I receive the healing power of Yeshua. Holy Spirit, touch me in the name of Yeshua right now. Man, I wasn't going to go this direction, but I feel the healing power of God beginning to flow into this room. I feel the healing power of God beginning to flow through that camera in the name of Yeshua. Come on, if you need healing in your body, come on, I want you to begin to believe God in one night. God will and can suddenly turn it around. I speak now in the authority of Yeshua's name. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He took the chastisement and the punishment of our peace. And by the stripes of Yeshua, you are healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Come on. Come on. I command blind eyes to be open. I rebuke any symptom that has attacked your eyes. I command your eyes to be open in the name of Yeshua. I rebuke blindness. You foul spirit of blindness or that which would alter 2020 vision. Come out! Be thou made whole in your eyes right now. I command your eyes to see clearly. I speak to your ears. I rebuke the ringing in your ears. I rebuke deafness, hard of hearing in the name of Yeshua. You deaf and dumb spirit in the authority of Yeshua's name. Come out! Loose them. I command your hearing to be restored. I rebuke acid reflex. I speak to your esophagus. I speak to your sphincter and I command it to close. I speak to your diaphragm, be thou made whole. I say if there's been any damage, any scarring that has been done to your esophagus, to your throat, in the name of Yeshua, I command the balm of Gilead, the healing anointing of God himself, to flow from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, inside your body, outside your body. I speak the manifestation of God himself, no man receive the glory but you Yeshua as you touch the people from the top of their head to the soles of their feet be thou made whole I rebuke heart conditions in the name of Yeshua I pray now no heart surgeries no bypass surgeries no heart attack is ever allowed no brain bleeds no blood clots no aneurysms no strokes no many strokes in the name of Yeshua I speak divine preservation I speak divine healing be thou made whole I speak to your heart I speak to your heart no heart murmurs no heart pain 
no heart blockage no valve blockage I command now that all your veins be clear arteries be clear the byways be clear in the name of Yeshua I come against every disease I speak to pain I command you to come out you foul spirit of cancer you must bow to the authority of Yeshua's name the name that is above all other names that at the sound of the name of Yeshua cancer come out in the name of Yeshua we curse every cancerous cell that cancerous cell you dry up you dissolve you die and come out we loose life the life of God into every cell every fiber every organ every particle the bones the blood the immune system of your body is healthy it's whole come on receive your healing I'm going to ask for the pastoral staff to come up front here come on come on stand up here come on if you're feeling something of God on your body right now lift it up lift up your hands if you're feeling something I want you to get out of your chair right now I want you to form a line and they're gonna line up and they're gonna lay hands on you you're just gonna walk by them and they're gonna pronounce the healing power of God Lord you said a believer shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover come on get out of your chairs if you're feeling something on your body you're you're literally sensing God right now and you want a hand to be laid upon you come on make them go around this way they can come up here now let these guys come up go around go around come on go around I want to make sure in a straight line in a straight line go back over here let them go over here in a straight line begin to lay hands on them those of you that are watching Listen, if it takes them a little bit of extra time, they can just come right up here, Pastor Doug. No, don't make them go back. Just let them come up over here. Bring them over there. If they need a little bit extra time. Those of you that are watching, I stretch my hands towards you. This phone is a point of contact. And in the name of Yeshua, I release the healing power of God into your body. Be thou made whole. Right now, I speak to rash. I command the rashes, dissolve, come off of their body. Lung conditions, breathing conditions, I rebuke you in the name of Yeshua. You're in a hospital room. Someone you know is in a hospital room. We send the word into that hospital room. We send the word, be thou made whole. Be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Come on, move the line a lot quicker. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, just give them a touch. Come on, move the line. Move the line. Come on, the anointing is flowing. I don't want to, I don't want to delay it. Come on, let that healing anointing come. Let the power of the Holy Ghost touch the people now. In the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, be thou made whole, be thou made whole, be thou made whole, be thou made whole in the name of Yeshua. Come on, keep moving them. Be healed. Those of you that are listening, those of you that will listen later, by the stripes of Yeshua, you have been made whole by the power of your eternal covenant. Jeremiah 30 17 he was wounded for your transgressions and therefore Jeremiah 30 17 he's restored your health he's healed you of every and all affliction I command backs to be healed hips knees be healed I command your back to line up your knees line up in the name of Yeshua Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, just hold them right here. Just give a moment for those people to get back to their seats. And then we're going to move the line along quicker. Just hold them for just a moment. Thank you. Brenda, you can keep bringing them through. You ready? Thank you, Lord. That's why we need a bigger place, but it's coming. Father, we prophesy this is their night. This is their night. Thank you, Lord. Make sure they get back to their chairs. Move the line. Thank you, Lord. All right, release them. Be healed. Be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be thou made whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be thou made whole in Yeshua's name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Yeshua's name. Come on, keep worshiping. We worship you, God. May your glory touch the people. May your anointing destroy every yoke of bondage. Undo the heavy burden that comes from sickness, from infirmity, Lord. Heal their body. Heal their bodies. And the covenant be fulfilled. It is fulfilled. Let it manifest over their lives. Thank you for healing. Thank you for wholeness. Thank you for soundness of mind. I prophesy long life over everyone. I prophesy this night that things begin to change. They wake up and there's no more disease. No more pain. No more infirmity. No more sickness. It comes out and it stays out. And the healing power of God is flowing. It's manifesting over them. To them. Through them. In Yeshua's name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, keep the line moving. Thank you, Lord. How many of you in the audience already, you can tell something has happened in your body? There's some hands going up. Come on. Just thank God. Just thank God. Just thank God. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. All right, just worship you. There is no one as great as you, God. The plowers plowed your back, Yeshua, making deep long their furrows, led by those wonderful stripes. You are healed. They are healed. Come on. We were healed. We are healed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. See yourself healed. See yourself healed. See yourself healed. See yourself healed. Pastor Doji, you should be up in the line. Come on up here. Hurry. Come on. Chelsea, come. Jesus. Keep worshiping. Jesus. Jesus. Move the line. Jesus, Stretch our hands towards you that are watching. Jesus, Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Jesus. Jesus. Touch their bodies. Jesus, Thank you, Lord. 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 Touch them. Touch them. They're healed by the stripes of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. Everybody, everybody. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Be healed in your legs. Be healed in your back. Be healed. Some of you just need to take a deep breath and breathe in. Breathe it in. Thank you, Lord. 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 Come on, Jesus. Come on, just worship Him. Put your eyes upon Him. Gaze upon His beautiful face. Jesus. Mighty to heal, Jesus. 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 Mighty to save. Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. Mighty to save. Oh, Jesus, Yeshua, healer, touch the people. Jesus, we 
dispatch, Lord God, your angels to minister in healing, deliverance. Oh God, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just worship Him now. Worship Him. We worship you, Jesus. All right, I want to ask you now. The Bible says that we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb. How many know the blood of the Lamb? It's already been shed. And that power and the right and the privilege of that covenant has been enforced. It says we've overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I'm not talking about you think, but you know that there is something significantly different. Matthew, I want you to monitor comments real quick online. And I don't know what social media is doing anymore. You can't say the blood of Jesus or they'll cancel you, right? It's too violent. What's that? There's so many platforms, we don't even know what to follow. How many of you in this room, you know something different has happened to you? Can you shout it out? What's happened to you, sir? Right here. What's different? <clears throat> Indigestion. You can feel something different. How many's eyes got touched tonight? Something different with your eyes. Anybody? What happened to your eye? No more double vision? Praise God. How about ears? Somebody's ears. What happened? Anybody's ears get touched? How about pain? Does anybody, you see the pain go from your body? Praise God, there's hands there. I feel like there's some people that can breathe a little bit different. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right, I want to put up, Pastor Ben, I want you to come. I want to put up, you can go ahead and be seated. I want to put up Psalm 105, verse 37, one more time. You know the beautiful part of tonight? We're not done. We still got, we're going to pray over all of these. What's that? We're going to hit those things. And at this point, somebody (laughs) might need to do the praying for me so I can preach to you on Sunday morning. But you know what? How many remember at the conference last year, man, I didn't have a voice. And I'm standing on the front row. It was Sunday morning. And you, you know, God has a sense of humor. And he says, Hank. I want you to get up there. I want to speak. I said, Lord, you mean like you want me to like prophesy? He said, do it. I got gotcha. you. And I doubted all the way up there. I was not the man of faith and power. I'm sitting here like this. You all think I'm getting spiritual when I'm walking up there. I'm like, how do you want me? Lord, I can't even talk. I can't even project my voice. And I'm arguing with them on the way up. <clears throat> Aren't you glad that God uses you in spite of yourself? <laughs> so, and I am. I'm sitting there. Father, you would remember this. And I'm sitting here pleading with him. Lord, you know this is not good. And I get up. And the minute God, be, you know, I begin to open my mouth, God begins to speak. And you could hear it. The voice just comes back. And some of those prophecies from that day, I, I boast of you, Lord, is some of the most incredible accurate words that are happening today so what am I saying to you sometimes you just have to step out I'm not trying to draw attention to me I'm trying to draw attention to the greatness of God and you just you know you say well I don't feel anything different don't go on feelings you go on your faith and the faith of what has already been provided and in one night look at Psalm 105 37 come on over sweetheart he brought them forth with silver and gold, I prophesy your financial situation's changing. And there was not one in the sound of my voice, not one sick anymore, not one struggling, not one tired, weak, confused, or troubled person 
among us. Slap yourself. Say, I'll take that. I'm blessed. <laughs> okay. All right. Good looking. You ready? Amen. Take it away. Yes. All right. All right. Well, we're going to get ready to pray over these prayer requests, but I wanted to share just a brief word because how many of you know the Bible is filled with promises? It's what I love about scripture. It's filled with things that we can sink our teeth into and we're going to give our offerings tonight and uh, but before we do I wanted to share these promises that I found you know the the scripture is so I mean this is the amazing thing about God I mean we saw so many amazing things about the Lord tonight but think about all of the times when it came to giving that there was a promise attached I used to grow up you know in kind of a I don't know. I guess we went to what we called the frozen chosen church or whatever. And everybody said that you couldn't trust God to do amazing things in your life as a result of giving. They like preached against it. And yet every time I read about giving in the scripture, every time there's some promise attached. Well, throughout the both, I mean, think about, you know, second Corinthians chapter nine, we you know, quote that so many times where it says, you having all sufficiency in all things will abound to every good work. Well, who wouldn't want sufficiency in all things? Well, that's a giving scripture. And it says, that's a promise that's attached to our offerings. And so here we're coming in now into the feast seasons of the summer or the spring, the summer and the fall. Now, Theoretically, technically, the Jewish calendar or the Hebrew calendar, Passover this year, it's in April, April the 20th, and it lasts for that week, that last week of April. But we're celebrating now Jesus, according to the Gregorian calendar, we're celebrating our the Passover season all the way, which will carry us into Pentecost. How many of you excited about the, any Pentecostals in the room? I'm just glad I go to a church where they believe in divine healing. I certainly wouldn't want to have something serious going on and then have a bunch of people that believe God will kill you. I want somebody to know how to pray for healing and believe that God, you know, hold on to the word of God and fight for me to live, right? Isn't that what you would want? That's what you would want. And so the word of God is filled with these promises that are attached to our giving. So we go Passover, Pentecost, and in the fall, Tabernacles. Well, we're celebrating the Passover feast. But I found, and I've studied these before, I think I've shared them a couple times, but I want you to go home with a promise on your lips tonight. I don't want, I never, we never in this church want to just do things because it's a ritual. That's where you get in trouble. That's how tradition sets in. That's how unbelief sets in. That's what the Pharisees got into. They were filled with tradition. And the Bible says it made the word of no effect. So everything we want to do, including our giving, is done in faith. We're kicking off one of the most powerful seasons of all the calendar year. And so I want to read this to you. This is, you can look in your Bible. You might want to write these down before we do our giving because I really want to plant this in your spirit so that you'll take it home and you'll hold on to it. This is what I believe the Lord wants us to release our faith for tonight. Exodus 23 and verse 14 says, Three times, talking about a year, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord. Verse 15, you shall keep the feast of the unleavened bread, and you shall eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee. That's the Passover season. And in that time appointed in the month of Abib, for in it you came out from Egypt. Aren't you thankful that your destination is in hell when you die? You came out of Egypt, and you're on your way to heaven. Touch somebody and say, I'm on my way to heaven. How about you? Now, why did God? So God said, you'll remember when you came out of Egypt and no, no person, none shall appear before me empty. You can read the same scriptures in Deuteronomy 16. God said three times a year, bring me an offering. And the reason he said that was because he wanted those three particular moments to be moments that they would never forget. And when we put money into something, we don't forget. 
Okay, when things are just free, I mean, yes, salvation is free, but it'll cost you everything. But, you know, there's an old saying, you put your money where your mouth is, right? We know that. Well, this is what God was saying. Come on, Israel, I want you to mark these key moments three times a year with an offering because these are the three elements. Come on, they are point to the plan of salvation, Passover, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, into Pentecost, which when the coming of the Holy Spirit, and tabernacles, which points to the second coming of the Lord. And he said, I want you to mark it. So let none come before me empty. And you can read all that, those passages on that. But here, look in verse 20. These are the promises. I love God because he never asks us to do anything without a blessing. These are the promises. The first one is the Lord says, behold, I will send an angel. Interesting, pastor was talking about the angel tonight. I will send an angel before you. So number one, you can, you'll know that angels are going to be released to first protect you. He said they'll keep you wherever you're going. So somebody say protection. protection. Say when I give tonight, I release my faith to be protected by God's angels. And those same angels, here's the second one, will bring you into the place that I've prepared. You know what? Where God brings you to the place he's prepared? That's your purpose. Say purpose. So when you're giving, you're releasing your purpose. Maybe you don't know God's plan for you. Maybe you've got off course. Maybe you, you're confused. You need some direction in your life. God is saying, in the space of this giving, during this feast season, I will bring you into purpose. And then in verse 22, it says these words. Then I will be, God said, in this season of unleavened bread, the Passover offering, I will be an enemy to your enemies. So that means God will take care of the devil for you and give you victory. Come on, you ought to shout amen to that. These are all promises that come with our giving our, of our offerings. Look down at verse 25. And this is the fourth one. And you'll serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread. How many of you know that's provision? Don't let anybody ever tell you God doesn't want to bless you financially. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That kind of thinking gives all the money to the the goofballs like Soros and you know no the church needs to claim her rightful place to be blessed so God said as a result of your offering I'll provide that's the fourth one I'll bless your bread and your water the fifth one he said I'll remove sickness from you that's a, a, a promise that comes with our giving during the Passover season and there shall be none that will cast their young, nor be barren. How many of you know that's fruitfulness? That's the sixth one. All as a result of Passover giving, our offerings at the time of this feast. And he said, not only will uh, they will not cast their young, nor be barren in the land. And here's the last one. This is the seventh one. He says, and the number of your days I will fulfill. Come on, those are seven promises that as a result of our past, I, I don't know that there's any stone left unturned here. God made everything available. And he said, in that season, when you bring forth your offering, these are the things that I'll do. You can bank on it. If God said it, he'll do it. So we're going to put up the giving information. There's uh, envelopes on your chair. And then we're going to, and I, so I want you to release your faith. We're going to pray over these prayer requests. And if you didn't get all of the seven, if you don't remember them all, but you can go home, you can rewatch this. Those of you online, well, it'll be out there. And I want you to release your faith over this seat. If you need healing tonight, if you need provision, maybe you don't know what, maybe you're out of a job in here. As you sow... Then believe the Lord. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 16 said every person give is according according to the blessing of God. Actually, I like what Deuteronomy says in the in the season of the feast giving. He said it this way. He said that you will rejoice. It'll be a season of joy to you. Isn't that good? 
So put the giving information up. Ushers, you can serve everybody with envelopes. And let's, those of you that want to give toward Passover, resurrection, on the drop down, this is our special seed to God, believing for these seven things. On the drop down, just select. It's out there. We'll keep it out there all the way through the month of April till the official season of Passover, according to the Hebrew calendar, is completed. But we'll keep it out there. But I want you to think about what it is you're believing God for tonight. All right? Get your phone in your hand. Get an offering envelope, or they have special Passover offering envelopes. And we're going to stand in a moment, and we're going to, I'm going to declare these things over your life. And then I want you to think about if you have a prayer request up here in internet if you've sent in in fact i saw bob he was out there bringing in more that have been coming in through the night um all of these prayer requests i believe one of these seven things are probably in there how many of you think that so as you hold your seed believe god that in one night it's going to change all right when you're ready i want those of you that have your phone out uh let's stand we're going to stand together and I want to make this declaration that all the pastoral staff, let's get ready because I believe in this giving environment, this is where we're going to, this is where we're going to release our faith in these seven promises. But I want to declare these over you. So pastors, let's gather around. We're going to get ready. And I want you to hold your phone. Come on, get your seat in your hand because we're going to release this. These were the promises for the giving at the Passover time. If you gave it before you came into church, we'll hold your phone. Do it as an act of faith. Let's hold it together. Those of you online, hold your device as well. When you're ready, I'm going to pray. Pastors are going to come and we're going to stretch our hands over each one of these in the name of Jesus. So Father, we thank you that right now this is the promise in this holy, holy set apart feast season we come willingly before the throne of God in our giving into the things of the kingdom and we thank you as we offer our sacrificial gifts for what Jesus did we commemorate this moment we mark this time of what Jesus paid for on the cross. We mark it in our life that we will never forget. Father, as we give these gifts, let it be a moment that we will never forget where you brought us from. Now, Lord, we stand according to your word in agreement in this room, and we thank you that the angels are being released over every giver tonight to protect them, to keep them safe, to keep them from evil, to keep them from harm. We release our faith for it. Say, I'll take that in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that at those that are giving tonight, you have prepared a place of purpose for them. So I think you ought to say that. Say, I claim my destiny. My purpose in God shall be fulfilled. Now, Lord, we thank you that the third promise is you said you'd be an enemy to our enemies. So, Lord, right now for these people, we speak and declare victory over every battle, over every difficult place. We declare it in Jesus' name. So say, I claim my victory in the name of Jesus. Devil, you're defeated. You're under my feet. Now, Lord, we thank you. The fourth one, we say that you will bless our bread and our water according to the promise of your word. So I speak and declare provision over these. I say whatever need they have, financial or otherwise, Father, we say it is met in the name of those that need jobs. We say they receive them. They get a new job, a gainful employment. We say those that are deep in debt, we say debt cancellation over you. Bills paid for. Come on, miraculously, supernaturally. We say it in Jesus' name. So say these words. Say, I claim provision. And now, Lord, we thank you for the next one, which is healing. You said in the, in the atmosphere of giving, we could claim our health. We could co claim our strength. We could claim the divine healing power of Almighty God. So we, we claim now our healing in the name of Jesus. Say this, say, I take my healing in the name of Jesus. I claim it. I'm well. I'm healed. I'm strong. I'm whole. Woo. That's 
a good one. All right, the sixth one. Let's come on. Are you ready? Are you, are you claiming it? Here it is. God said, none shall cast their young or be barren. And by the way, if you're under the sound of my voice and you're trying to, you and your uh, spouse are trying to conceive and bear a child, you claim this. One of the promises of scripture when in the atmosphere of the Passover offering is to claim your right to bear children. So we break the power of barrenness. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We say that you shall be able to bear fruit and have children. I speak spiritual fruitfulness. I say that your life is not a barren life. It's a blessed life. And you'll multiply and bear fruit in the earth. And the last one. All right. Hallelujah. Don't ever let the devil tell you ever again that he'll kill you early. The devil is a liar. Hold your offering big on this one. This is the promise of the Passover offering. Come on, a holy, holy moment. Father, we thank you. According to the scripture, you said you would grant long life. That our life would not be cut short. You said in your word that the number of our days you will fulfill. So as we hold up our gifts this night, Father, we thank you that you will fulfill the number of our days. So say this, say, I claim long life in the name of Jesus according to the Passover promise. I say it's mine right now in Jesus' name. Now give God a shout. Hallelujah. All right, pastors, let's come over. We're going to pray. Ushers, why don't you begin to serve the people? Let's stay in an attitude of faith and worship. All right, how many are ready to pray? Amen. By the way, I got I got while they're serving you, just give me a minute. Thank you. This makes it a lot. Hey, that makes it a lot better. Come on, guys. Come on around. By the way, you're seeing Anthony. It's no secret. We're going to be ordaining him soon into the ministry. So... It's, uh, it's good to have him here. You can stand. You can be seated. But we're going to believe God with you and everyone whose name, family member, loved one is right here. But i got to tell you, you know, i got to break on my wife. She made me some lamb. I think that is my favorite. I, I love lamb. How many of you had lamb already this week? It's amazing. I mean, we, we, we're so including the lamb in our home. I even gave lamb to the dogs, man. So going to do that but here's the here's the bottom line yeah they do make lamb dog food so you say well what does that have to do with anything i don't know i just thought i'd fill some time but i want to pray for every person because the lamb of god his blood was shed father what an honor it is to come before the throne of you the most high god yes lord and we thank you that when we come we can come boldly and you said we would receive grace, yes, mercy, God. divine help in the time of need. This is the promise of covenant yes, Lord. because of Yeshua's blood that he put upon the mercy seat. And the covenant yes, Jesus. has been sealed, ratified, enforced by his blood. Therefore, we claim every single right, That's right. and privilege of what has been paid in full by Yeshua's blood. We speak that there is the forgiveness of sin and iniquity of all that are here. Yes. We speak that there is, according to Psalm 103, they're healed from every and all disease. Their life has been redeemed, we pray, from all destructions, right. tragedy, yes. calamities. And they're crowned with your tender mercy and your loving kindness which is Psalm 23 6 that goodness and mercy follows these people this night and all the days of their life and Psalm 121 the God that does not sleep or slumber shall cause these that we are praying for in the sound of our voice and that are represented here they shall never stumble they shall never fall and we speak and we declare that they are preserved their life yes, coming Lord in going God. out Hallelujah. and in between 
and they're preserved from all evil therefore the destroyer shall not destroy the health yes, Lord. the life the marriages the jobs the finances or whatever else these people might be facing we rebuke the devourer and we command the life of God the intervention of God we're asking you according to Psalm 103 oh God execute righteousness and justice for all these that may be oppressed we're asking for an acceleration of your hand an acceleration of your blessing and we are speaking and declaring that the anointing destroys every yoke of bondage and it does every heavy burden we speak that in one night two nights things begin to change for good they begin to change for breakthrough they begin to change for divine turnarounds we release the angels of the most high go forth intervene and bring the answers the breakthroughs now suddenly in Yeshua's name someone else Brenda go ahead hallelujah now father we just thank you as well in the name of Jesus I bind over all of these the spirit of fear I break anxiety regarding each of these circumstances and situations we say you foul spirit of fear get off of these people's minds in the name get out of their homes get off their get off of their families we bind it in the name of Jesus of Nazareth and we declare that their faith rises again we declare that their confidence and assurance in the word of God and God's faithfulness promises we thank you Lord that their faith shall arise afresh and the fear of the enemy is bound from their minds now Lord we ask that you would release your angelic hosts to go forth and wage war on their behalf we thank you that you bring them into all that you have for them your purpose your plans we thank you Lord you give each one of them victory we prophesy the victory of God over every single uh, uh, note every handwriting we say that God and I prophesy to you and I say the Lord gives you the victory over these right now in the authority of Jesus name in fact I want the church to shout victory victory come on shout it again victory we say victory we say victory we say we say victory! Victory! Come on, shout it so the internet can hear you! Jesus' name! Right now, Father, we declare in the name of Jesus over every single prayer request right here online in this room, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you sent your Son to come and to die a bloody death at Calvary. But guess what happened that night? He said the words that changed everything. It is finished. So we declare it is finished. He came down a perfect, innocent man to take on our imperfections, our sins, our ailments, our diseases, our sicknesses, so that we can live free uh, in heaven with him. He laid down his life. He placed his blood on the mercy seat. So therefore, we can live in accordance with him. That is our covenant, God, that you promised us. So therefore, we declare every single word on all of these requests is a divine turnaround now in Jesus' name. And we declare it. It goes forth in Jesus' name into the atmosphere. Angelic hosts, go now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that the church is the church. We call ourselves to order, Lord God, doing battle, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty. And in the name above all names, we declare you as Lord, Lord over every situation, every every circumstance every every trial every 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 torment that the devil would arise in now father god we declare your lordship of blessing of increase of empowerment to stand and having done all to stand lord god we stand together with these people who now ask for their turnaround for their blessing 
And we decree in the name of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the authority of Jesus, that it is done. It is done according to your power, your promise, your plan. For we are your church. And we will declare in that name all the victory forever. Come on, church, I want some of you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, if you can stand, if you have the strength to stand, let's stand. I want us interceding over these like our life depended on it. Come on, let's not spectate tonight. Come on, come on, use your prayer language. Let's get in agreement. Jesus' name. He that I was seated at Araboko, the Rabba Sete, the Lebo Roma Montada, Rese Priste, we speak in the spirit. Ronde de Batele de Boruma Mamasete, we pray out divine mysteries in the name of Yeshua. We speak out divine mysteries in the spirit, angelic intervention, the hand of God, witchcraft, divination is being broken every hindering spirit is being stopped we loose we loose we loose we loose we loose all right i'm going to do something that is crazy but I've, I, I, the Lord's telling me to do it. I want us to lift this table, move it back right here. Just lift it right back here. I want you guys, we're going to walk around this with you. I heard the Lord say seven times. I don't know why. All right. So your job is to count. When I come back around to this spot, you yell out one. You yell out, is that right? One. And that, yeah, all of us are walking. And on the seventh time, we are going to give a shout. And those of you that are watching, that is going to cause every demonic stronghold to break. Every resistance, all barriers to fall. Ready? All right, come on. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Ready? Come on. Lord God, we surround it. Come on. Come on. We surround it. We surround it. Go quick. Come on. Come on, pray it out, 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 pray it out. Come on, let me hear you pray. Father, we make intercession for these beautiful people. We make intercession for every one of these requests. Come on, lift it up! Show! 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 The victory! Breakthrough! 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 Hallelujah! Praise! 
let's let's seal this touch yourself say now I say this is sealed what's been decreed is official it's done it's established in heaven and so on the earth I will not come out of agreement which has been decided and decreed in the courts of heaven give God one last praise come on don't you love him hallelujah the Lord. Well, before you go, as you get ready to hug one another on the way out, I want to remind everybody, join us for Resurrection Services 9 and 1130 right here at Lord of Hosts. By the way, those of you in person, do you see the sign coming in? Yeah. yeah. Does Pastor Doug have to, I want him just to give an opportunity. Oh, yes. Okay. I want you, you just to hold tight two minutes. I just want to have him pray real quick for anyone that maybe needs to accept Jesus Christ online and those of you that are here this is the most important part he's going to lead you in a prayer but i want you to come sunday those of you that are watching i've got a great word listen we don't religiousize it on sunday just because it's resurrection sunday when i talk about the power of the ascension it's very powerful so pastor doug let's lead watch you stand just get two more minutes and he's this is the most important part come on let's show god our honor pastor yeah, doug you have a microphone yes okay, i'm great. okay so we're good Aren't you excited to be here tonight? Aren't you glad you came? Amen. Well, just in case there might be someone in the audience tonight, or maybe you're watching online, and you've never made a decision to ask Jesus Christ into your life and make him the Lord of your life, it's the most important decision you'll ever make. It's the most important decision you'll ever make. Because the only way to live a successful life on this earth and then be with Jesus in heaven is when you make a decision to serve him while you're here and while you're breathing, while you're alive on this earth. I was just visiting with someone on staff this week and they were telling me the story of someone that they had just talked to a few days earlier and found out that he went off into eternity suddenly. You never want to leave this earth without knowing that you have made peace with God. The Bible tells us while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter how horrible your past has been or what you've done in the past that you may feel guilty about. God has an abundant life for you. He has a wonderful plan for you. And you just have to make a decision to serve Him. So let me ask you just to bow your heads. I won't keep you much longer tonight. But possibly there's even someone here in this auditorium, and I believe there are several watching online. You need to make that decision tonight. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. In other words, don't put it off till tomorrow. So I'm going to ask if there's someone here in front of me tonight or maybe you're down in the chapel and you would say, Pastor Doug, I need to get it right. I need to get on track with God. I need to make a decision. Because if you don't make the decision while you're on this earth to serve Him and walk with Him, then you've already made a decision to spend an eternity in the place the Bible describes as a place of torment called hell. And once you're there, you can never leave. You're there for eternity. So I'm going to ask tonight if there's someone here and you want to just make it right with God and make a decision, I'm going to pray with you. And it all starts with a simple prayer of repentance and asking Jesus to come into your heart. You can do that right where you're at in your home or you can do it right here in front of me tonight, whichever is the case. Don't let pride hold you back. The biggest deterrent for people accepting Jesus is pride because they think they can do it themselves. But God created us. He knows the best plan for our lives. So if that's you today and you say, Pastor Doug, I want prayer. I want to get it right. I want to walk with God. I'm going to count to three and I'm going to ask you to be bold and raise your hand quickly and we're going to get it right tonight. You can pray with me. You can leave here having peace, 
knowing you've reconciled your life with God. One, two, three. If you need prayer tonight, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Is there anyone here in this room? Anyone here? I don't see any hands. If you're at home, raise your hand so God can see it. Raise your hand. I see there's someone in a kitchen. It's painted yellow. And you're watching tonight. You're in a yellow kitchen. You need Christ in your life. Raise your hand right there so Jesus can see it. And we're going to pray together. I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. And you can receive Jesus right where you're at. Let's pray together. Just repeat after me. Father in heaven, we just thank you tonight for sending Jesus. We know, Lord, that he went to the cross and he died for my sins. But he was buried and he rose again on the third day. I believe that. And tonight, I ask Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life, make me a new creature. And I will serve you all the days of my life. Forgive me for sin in my life. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer tonight, you can call our 800 number. You can write us. You can email us. Get more information. We'll be glad to help you on your walk with him. Don't forget to be back in the house on Sunday morning. We're going to celebrate Resurrection Day together. God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you Sunday morning.